What's up guys and welcome to another episode of tips and strategies for Rock and Eden. I'm Kalistos of State 119 and today we're gonna be discussing speciality. Everything you need to know from the beginning of every single Rock and Eden season to the specific strategies in your speciality that apply to certain situation when and why. So let's not waste any time, kick in the intro and begin. All right, so rock season one, speciality level zero. What do you do? Well, the first thing you want to be focusing on is your processing speed. Because it doesn't matter how many tiles you have, it doesn't matter what level those tiles are, if you cannot process the materials from them, they won't be of any use. And this is why at the beginning of each season you want to be focusing firstly on your processing speed. And we do that by going into blue left, focusing on the increase of processing speed and keep going that way till we have unlocked two extra cues for our frontline workshops. Now while we're doing that, we're also gonna be focusing on the iron and wood tiles to get that construction materials because you want to again focus on the processing speed and therefore we are upgrading our frontline workshops and your main goal would be to get them all four to level 12 with the two extra cues included. Now pretty much everything in the speciality is situational so don't take it as a recipe of you either do it like that or you have failed your entire season because you cannot control what's going to happen in each season. You are not going to be the only person tiling and therefore that doesn't mean you're going to be having access to just construction material tiles. It may happen that you don't have a strong legion and you cannot push poison tiles and therefore it's going to require you to get some upgrades for the coalition to be able to get higher level tiles. But ideally, this is the setup you want to go for and this should be your goal. Keep tiling, increase the speciality, get to those two extra cues and in the meantime, upgrade your frontline workshops till you get to level 12. When it comes to the tiles themselves, the main focus for you is to try and push higher and higher level of tiles. The idea here is at low level, even poison tiles can be taken with a strong enough legion and this is why at the beginning it's not that important to be focusing on the coalitions and it gives you the time to already develop the process which is the base structure for your entire season because once you get that processing everything else is gonna keep on rolling but if we're gonna be pushing poison tiles that also means you need to prepare a lot of troops before the season starts. Whether you are in Rock or in Eden, make sure to have a lot of troops if you're planning to push poison tiles. Always try to use your strongest legion for it to minimize the casualties from it. Now once we got the processing speed going, of course the next in line comes to focus on the coalitions and increasing the loyalty to get to that sweet level 16 tile at the end. The variety unfortunately for free to play players especially in the rock season is not that big because we only have one reset per season to play with. But for those that are planning to spend that extra dollar in the game to get the advantages from it, with the rock pack you also get the resets and more importantly the extra construction materials to help you out even more in developing those front-like workshops before everybody else so you can switch to the loyalty. Now if you did spend that money and you have those extra resets, remember at level 27 in your loyalty you will be able to reset and unlock the extra assault and guardian buildings from your speciality. 
Now, even if you're not going to be worried about upgrading those buildings, the extra buffs coming from each one of them, having them unlocked, is really going to make a difference throughout the entire event. And once you have unlocked those buildings, you can already switch back to your previous speciality as those buildings will remain even after the reset. So once we get those two cues from blue left, we want to continue on blue right. And there we're gonna be focusing on reducing the time it takes in the coalition to heal those troops, but more importantly, to get to that bonus extra loyalty, which is gonna help you skip a few upgrades on your coalitions to increase the level of your tiles. And for a lot of seasons, even when you get to even, this is going to be a repeated strategy of focusing on the processing speed at the beginning, then focusing on the loyalty. And the more points you have, the, the faster you're going to get both of them available. Now, for all of you that are in even, you have the luxury of having the honor shop. And that gives free to play players the opportunity to get extra resets with honor coins without having to spend real money in the game. Now, before I continue with the season, let me just specify this. Guys, you can have a million strategies and a million tips regarding speciality, but the most important factor in developing your speciality is how active you're going to be during the rock seasons or even seasons. Yes, spending money does speed up the process and it helps players a lot. But using that as an excuse as a free-to-play player not to develop your own speciality is not going to help. Be active. Make sure you spend that stamina every day and that is actually the key in developing speciality. Keep taking and retaking tiles. Don't ever let that stamina be full empty the stamina before going to sleep and always keep on processing those materials it sounds like something basic and ordinary but still it's those basic things that people tend to neglect and therefore slow down their development but with that said we are getting close to the end of the season you've done your best you've won or lost the season but still that doesn't stop you from developing your speciality even more now ideally of course you want to get to level 16 tiles the higher the level of the tiles the more materials we get from it the more materials we have to process once you get to level 16 tiles and that 8k loyalty you want to be switching all your tiles to iron and wood to get that construction material out of them. And the reason why we're doing this is because you want to gather as much construction material as you can for the end season, where you're gonna be switching your speciality towards green left. And that is gonna increase the amount of honor we're getting from upgrading rock buildings. And you get some extra skills to help you even more with gaining honor for your speciality. Now with a quite recent update, the trick of collecting materials outside of Eden has been fixed. So now you are limited to the storage given to you from the frontline workshop. So increasing the level of the frontline workshop is also gonna increase the storage of the process materials. If not, you're gonna be having to do upgrades to consume construction materials to be able to process more but even so it's still worth it to keep on processing that construction materials for the end to get that massive amount of honor from maxing out your front like workshops followed by your assault and guardian buildings now for all of you that are in even let's talk about the two extra ways of boosting up your honor for the speciality and those are tile spamming and training spamming but before i can talk about those two i have to discuss about the banners as they are required for the tile spamming now a banner is a player that has put their spec points towards unlocking the two banner skills 
one skill is gonna increase the demolition value of any allied player attacking in the area of the banner and the other one is gonna decrease the stamina cost again of all the allied players attacking in the area of where the banner is the most important reason why the banner exists is for Eden objectives because whenever you're gonna be doing an objective with your guild you want to have that player placing the two banners on the objective so that you have increased demolition from all your guild and reduced stamina so that instead of 10 stamina per each attack you're gonna be spending only five to maximize the efficiency of taking objectives but besides all this the banner is also used for tile spamming and this is how it works for the tile spamming we're all gonna be needing the banner that reduces the amount of stamina you need for each attack. You need to select an area of high level tiles, the higher the better, level 16, 15, 14, maybe 13, to be available for anybody depending on their speciality and level of tiles. You want everybody to gather at a certain time, so like that you prepare the banner and the players ready for when you want to start. And more importantly, all the players participating in the tile spamming have to have maxed out tiles and the reason why you need that is the way the tile spamming works so the banner is gonna place a stamina reduction banner over the high level tiles in the center area where all the players are gathered then the players will attack those tiles to gain honor from it with the reduction from the banner, that means they can do double the attacks on those tiles. But for all those players to be able to concentrate all their attacks on those few tiles in the range of the banner, everybody needs to have maxed out tiles. Because when, you're, when you are maxed in tiles and you're trying to attack a tile, it's gonna tell you, you are maxed, you cannot occupy it, but if you press proceed, you are still allowed to send the attack and you're still gonna get the honor from attacking the tile as if you would have occupied but because you're not occupying it you can continue doing the same and let everybody else do the same also on the same tile so that's why it's critical that every person that's gonna participate in the tile spamming is gonna have all their tiles maxed out so they do not occupy the tile and pretty much break all the party up. I mean, really. To maximize even more the tile spamming, of course, make sure to activate your 100% honor bonus ticket. Now, for those of you that's gonna spend some money, you're gonna have more of them, but even free to play players can get their hands on a certain amount of them. And last but not least, the green spec. Now tile spamming or training spamming is gonna be something you want to be doing pretty much at the end of the season and the reason why is at the end of the season because you want to respec specifically for this. In the green right we're gonna be focusing on getting that extra honor from attacking tiles and that's gonna increase even more the amount of honor we're gonna be getting from tile spamming. So having that green right spec together with the 100 increase honor bonus from the ticket and the banner that is gonna double the amount of attacks you can get on those tiles doing this multiple times towards the end of the season is gonna really help you out to increase that speciality now again with the recent update from the developers the amount of honor you're getting from attacking tiles has been reduced to 60% from the 100 that was before and the reason why was to nerf specifically tile spamming that doesn't make it useless it's just not as effective as it was before but is it still better than training spamming now let's explain training spamming and then compare the two now for training spamming you need the same type of speciality as you need for tile training because those buff apply not just to attacking tiles but also to training on tiles now the advantage of training on tiles is the liberty of doing it whenever you want without depending on anybody else. 
it gives you the freedom to just log in whenever you want go into Eden press on the highest level tile you have send two 5x trainings from each legion and voila 30 seconds later you are out of stamina and full of new honor points and that is the beauty of focusing on training and even if you are still planning on doing tile spamming if you miss out the timing where the banner activated you can still spend your stamina in the training I personally actually prefer training simply because I, I just don't like the stress. <laughs> I don't like programming my life and I already spend an entire season being on time for each individual objective. So training and just coming online whenever I want and can, it's, it's just my way of doing things. But if you're focusing on maximizing honor, tile spamming is the way to go. Okay, so till now we talked about the strategies for the speciality itself. Now let's talk a bit about situational speciality points distribution. And I'm saying situational because these are things that you need to decide whether it fits your current situations to use that specific speciality. Let's start, for example, with one of my favorites, which is the blue arc going blue up is gonna increase the demolition value of your attacks and that applies to all your troops and all your legions and why is it so important because with the help of that extra demolition value together with the master warfare demolition increase you can get all four cavalry legion to 500 demolition which means you're gonna be using the extra speed of having cavalry legions and have the 500 demolition value to snipe all the enemy tiles away and it's such a helpful thing to have in breaking reinforcements and taking the enemy tiles even if you don't have the avalanche hero besides this it also unlocks the skill of recalling troops by spending gems and maybe you don't want to do this on every single attack but when there's that crucial situations where you want to be getting to an objective to reinforce it as fast as possible but but you are at a very big distance that recall is a lifesaver and will save you minutes of recalling troops and sending them back there to keep that objective safe so this is one of my personal favorite of where to throw those extra points after you get those extra cues and the maxed out loyalty from blue left and right now another direction you can go with your speciality points to help you get that extra advantages over the enemy when it comes to tile wars is increasing the marching speeds on territories which means attacking tiles and objectives is gonna be much faster with the help of these extra buffs from your speciality and for that we're gonna be going green right if all this war nonsense is none of your business and all you're focusing on is just simply developing your speciality then those extra points will be better off going in green right but this time focusing on the increase of honor gain from tiles that is gonna help you develop your speciality even more while you're focusing on working on your tiles for the rock season if you're having trouble getting tiles because the enemy is always interfering or there's too much competition on tiles then another direction you can go with your points is green up to increase the amount of materials you get from your tiles which will make it even more rewarding even with less than normal tiles another skill with the same idea is the land development for which you have to go green right again and remember the land development only works on the current highest level tiles you own so if you're thinking of using this to just skip from level 15 to level 16 it doesn't work like that you need to first take a level 16 to be able to develop your 15s into 16s but again if you're getting to that end of the season and you feel like you're not gonna have time to completely develop your coalition camps to max out your tiles towards 16 the land development 
is a good option for it and last but not least is the speciality i haven't talked at all till now and the reason why is because uh, i know what you're looking for you want to fight and for that we have the red speciality now let's talk about it because there's a lot of things to talk about so there's a million directions you can go with the red speciality and pretty much everything is useful but what is your main priority well first of all let's discuss about the difference between chaos buffs and siege buffs the siege buffs apply to attacking castles whether you are in rock eden or outside of it it's only on attacking castles where the chaos buffs apply on tiles objectives so if you're having a lot of tile wars and you want those extra buffs then you need to go up in the red speciality to get the chaos buffs if you're planning to fighting a lot of castles or you want to use the red spec for the kill event or outside then yes you want to go for the siege buffs now even though again there's a lot of buffs that all of them are useful and great to have your main focus should be those big things in the middle because those are very impactful buffs to get and the reason why those buffs are more impactful than the rest because those apply to damage so it doesn't matter if you're gonna get skill damage or basic attack damage it still applies to both of them in the same way where if you're gonna be focusing for example in getting resistance but the, uh, but the enemy is attacking you with skill damage your resistance is useless and that's why those buffs specifically because they apply to damage in general are so impactful and worth to get now besides the extra buffs running around the red spec the most impactful and wanted skills are the one on red right and more specifically let's talk about the invisibility skill and the taunt now if you ever got attacked by an enemy you haven't seen no troops attacking you and if you're looking at the report all you see is camouflaged enemy without any info about it that means the guy that attacked you had the invisibility skill activated and this is what it does it hides the information of the attacker or in this case your information towards the person you are attacking and it also hides the line that your legion makes towards the target you are attacking now you still see the beginning and the end of the line but you don't see the middle so especially if you're gonna be doing long distance attacks in kill events they're gonna see that something is happening but until they're gonna find you you're most probably gonna be gone if you're planning to take revenge on somebody in your own state without becoming a rogue player and getting zeroed by your entire state you can also use the camouflage skill for that not that I would ever advise you to do that or I ever did such a thing no I actually didn't do that but if you want to this is the way to do it camouflage yourself do a long distance attack hit your target nobody knows what hit it and bam finished now the camouflage skill also applies to scouting somebody but there is a bug to it now this bug does not apply to attacks but if somebody has scouted your castle while camouflage it will still say the same thing as in an attack camouflage player scouted your castle we have no information but if you click on where the coordinates of the player should be because you don't see them but if you click on that area it will still send you to the coordinates from where the scouting came now again this does not work on attacks itself but if you ever get scouted by a camouflage player this is how you can find out where it came from now when it comes to the taunt skill it's very simple you use the taunt skill to break a shield that is already active on your castle and for that you get a 20 minutes buff of might to kick ass in the kill event or in Eden but mostly in the kill event let's face it 
Now these are the more renowned skills and the more used ones from the red skill. But precision shot is an equally impactful skill to get in certain situations. For everybody that has seen the throne battle I posted between 119 and state 76, you've seen at the beginning where I discuss about our dragon team and how they were spamming dragons on the enemy to keep them down. Now for maxed out castle, it's not that hard to keep on regenerating and having enough crystals to deal with enemy dragons. Worst case scenario, you're just gonna get a red annoying light in your castle, but it's not gonna stop you from nothing. Especially if you are in the mod, the speed reduction is just gonna make sending dragons a nightmare. But not with this skill. This skill gives you a 50% chance that your dragon is gonna directly hit the castle. And this is actually what happened in the throne battle against state 76. It didn't matter how much they prepared against our dragons. Because of this skill, those dragons was hitting them directly and zeroing them and poisoning them and slowing them down. So when it comes for this type of situations, that skill is a must have if you're planning to prepare a serious throne defense. Okay, so you don't have a lot of points, but you still want to use the most out of the red speciality. Where do you put them? Again, your main focus is to get the middle ones to work with percentage of damage. But I will give you an example of what I did with my speciality when I switched to red spec as I didn't have a high enough level to get everything I wanted. Because of my playstyle of being a very fast player when it comes to kill events, I very rarely get hit. And even if I do get hit, I don't have strong enough heroes to deal with the attacker. So I most of the time take my legions out of defense, which means buffs that uh, increase buffs to my legions when defending are pretty much useless to me because I'm not planning to defend. And therefore, in my case, because of my playstyle, I preferred to go red right and get the extra damage out of it. I still got the red left first middle buff because that damage reduction applies also to general attacks. But everything else just went straight towards the taunt invisibility skill and increase of might and resistance. But again, this is an example of how I put my red speciality because of my playstyle. My advice is figure out what your plan is. Figure out what heroes you have and what you are able to be doing to decide more efficiently what you want to be doing with the points. But generally, you want to be focusing on getting first towards the big skills before you worry about investing more in the lower buffs. And with that guys, I think I've taken enough of your time with this video. The same as in the other video, there's probably a lot more things to talk about regarding speciality, but I'm gonna leave it to this. Remember, if you wanna learn about tiling in the Rock and Eden events, check out my first video from the tips and strategies for Rock and Eden. If you enjoyed this one, make sure to leave a like to show your appreciation. Share it with your friends and anybody else that needs the information. Subscribe to the channel to get notified of all the new videos coming up. But that's it for me guys. Thanks again for checking in and I'll see you in the next videos.